Aaron throwing hands on Loverboy Armin, the revelation of the Ackerman bloodline explaining Mikasa's superhuman abilities, Zeke finally unleashing his horrid plans pushing Levi to kill even more of the ones he holds dear, and the continuing fall of the Survey Corps as Keith Shadis, the bystander, lays beaten on the floor. All of these moments paired with a double showing before the season finale is leaving all of us on the edge of our seat in anticipation for next week. We'll be talking about all of the above and much more in our Attack on Titan Season 4 Episode 14 Breakdown. Before we get into this week's breakdown, we want to express an incredible amount of gratitude to everyone that's involved with this double episode release in Japan, as they've been hit by yet another earthquake. We're sending out our hopes and prayers to everyone affected in the anime world and outside. Thank you for all that you do to provide us our favorite shows even through these terrible situations. And one more thing before we get started, we'll be running a giveaway in the next episode. So keep your eye out for the details, and until then, we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button for more Attack on Titan and ReZero episode breakdowns. Like if you enjoyed this video, and comment what you thought of the episode. We appreciate your support. Season 4, Episode 14, titled Savagery, went one level further in showcasing how cruel the people from both sides of this war can be. Commander Pixis and Erwin have always believed that Titans weren't the real enemies in this war, and this episode showcases the divergent views of the people involved. The title was the perfect personification of the central theme of Attack on Titan, and a grim reminder to fans showing how far people would go to impose their own beliefs over others. The episode began with Eren telling Armin and Mikasa that all of Eldia's problems could be resolved without any conflict if they listened to him, acting as the self-proclaimed god of this world. But in typical Armin fashion, he interrupts and asks Eren if Zeke and Yelena were the reason he launched the solo assault on Marley. Eren simply responds that he is free and his actions were of his own accord. But his friends still lay their hopes on him. A poor choice. Mikasa says he is being influenced and remembers the kind boy rescuing her from the kidnappers who slaughtered her parents. Kind being... Mm, relative in this case. Ignoring this, Eren proceeds to claim to have learned a lot from Zeke during his time in Marley, and asks Armin if he is still visiting Annie. He goes on to say that if memories play a role in determining who a person is, then a portion of Bertholdt's memories are already a part of Armin as well. We see a terrified and confused close-up shot of Armin, one that we wish had more information as we keep asking if Eren was actually right. Is Armin speaking to Annie because of his inherited crush from Bertholdt? Or is there something else entirely that he's been hiding? Throughout the season, Armin has behaved suspiciously, including when he may have saved Mikasa from the bomb taking down Zachary, and especially when it comes to fighting Marley bringing out the question of whether he's acting intentionally or if, or if Bertolt's memories are dictating his thought processes. We can't imagine that inheriting memories could have zero impact on someone as Aaron has clearly shown, but as fans criticize Aaron for his arrogant behavior in recent weeks, it really makes us question whether Aaron is truly selfish or acting for others entirely. Isayama's ability to contemplate morality like two sides of the same coin is truly unparalleled. We then learn more about the Ackerman bloodline, as Eren reveals the only reason Mikasa protected him in the cabin and all throughout their lives was because of the responsibilities of the Ackerman bloodline. While we get a brief explanation behind the reasoning for Mikasa's abilities, the manga does a much better job of explaining them. As we only read the manga along with episode releases, this hopefully isn't a spoiler to be explained later, but just in case, feel free to skip to the timestamp on screen if you're worried. In the manga, Eren explains that as a result of the Eldian Empire's experiments with Ymir's subjects, an unforeseen byproduct, the Ackerman clan, was created, capable of partially expressing the strength of a titan in human form. Since the Ackerman clan was created to defend Eldia's kings, Ackerman's instincts are activated when they identify a person as their host. All of the required conditions were met when Eren asked Mikasa to fight in the cabin, causing her abilities to awaken. This enhanced her physical and mental skills, all because she accepted Eren as her host. The same could be said for Levi and Erwin, and Kenny and Yuri Race. One interesting theory here involves Levi. The fact that Levi continues to show his unrivaled abilities in various situations begs the question of whether there can be multiple hosts for Ackermans. And if not, when someone dies, can there be another host? Theories like this, and the depth of the explanation for Mikasa's character, have been heavily anticipated. 
Arguably, one of the only negative aspects of Attack on Titan's story and characters has been Mikasa's one-dimensional obsession with Eren. The fandom has continuously expressed their love for Mikasa as a badass, beautiful heroine, but now we finally get the explanation behind her incredible powers somehow building exponentially towards insane levels. Seeing the horror on Mikasa and Armin's face when she instinctively attacks Armin to defend Eren really drove home the reality of what she was. Nothing she's ever done to defend Eren has been by choice, and it's left us broken. Is this the whole truth though? Looking back at the past seasons, is Mikasa's behavior seen in a whole different light, and not really love? Does making someone a host denounce their love, or amplify it? Comment below what you think about this new information, and if it means that Mikasa's love isn't real anymore. Eren's emotionless face through his Light Yagami-esque plotting drives home just how much things have changed. He proceeds to beat the absolute crap out of Armin with not only his hands but also his words as he inflicts some heavy-duty mental trauma on the fan-favorite best boy Armin. We're pretty sure Armin was trying his best to hold back some tears after Eren told him the only reason they never fought was because it wouldn't be a fair fight. Seeing Eren, Mikasa, and Armin's talk descend into chaos gave us a shocking insight into just how much Eren has changed. I'm sure we were all holding out hope that Eren had some master plan and would eventually rejoin Armin and Mikasa, but this episode put an end to any of those dreams. Watching Eren's ice-cold expression as he flatly tells Mikasa how much he's always hated her was insane. Throughout the whole series, the friendship between this trio has been a constant, and knowing how crucial to Eren's survival Mikasa has been, his callousness towards her was painful to watch. Eren once defended Armin against bullies, but now he's the person beating him down and goading him about how weak he is. It's been a long time since we last saw a conventional fistfight on the show, and the fact that it's between Eren and Armin is heart-wrenching. The fight between Armin and Eren also mirrors his assault on the armored and jaw titans. Just like we predicted in one of our previous episodes, this duo, who have always had each other's backs, have finally reached their breaking point. Armin and Mikasa are two of the few people who have always cared about Eren, as a person, not just as a weapon of destruction. So to see him abandon them like this is just sad. Isayama once said that he wanted to hurt readers and viewers, and he's doing a great job at it. <clears throat> Maybe we're naive, but we're still holding out hope that there are more layers to Eren's deception, and that this behavior is a mask for something else to come. Turning to Levi contemplating Zeke and Eren's connection, Levi tells Zeke that they were all out of wine, to which Zeke replies that this must be a new kind of torture. A clear lie as he runs Scooby-Doo style away like some sort of baby titan or a Spongebob character. The ability of Attack on Titan to take a simple or comical moment and drop an insane action or plot point is not unnoticed. Zeke runs away hilariously and sends out a trembling scream, echoing throughout every person on the island who drank the wine, unfortunately including Falco. An interesting note as he only had a small amount of the wine. Possibly a realistic amount for Zeke's ability to work, or maybe a clue to something else being plotted involving Falco or even all of the warrior candidates as we didn't see Gabby's reaction. The petrified Levi couldn't do anything but watch as he loses yet another squad to this horrifying war, terror expressed on his face as his comrades turned to titans and fell from the trees. Zeke, being the smartass he is, taunts Levi and asks him if he can actually split his own people apart. A pretty ridiculous statement for how far we've seen Levi work for the cause. I mean, come on, who do you think we're talking to, Zeke? Levi deduces how Zeke lied about the details of the spinal fluid, realizing that the statement about people being paralyzed when they came into contact with his spinal fluid was a hoax. While Zeke is running away, he thinks about how Levi and him couldn't really meet eye to eye because of how they both grew up in different circumstances. An interesting if story to think about. We truly wonder how things would have gone if Zeke had been honest and explained everything to Levi. Nevertheless, Levi makes the horrifying split-second decision to take down his comrades. An incredible scene, as we see Levi struggling with the heavy decision thrown upon him, imagining the faces of his friends, and asking if they're still in there. An incredible moment when we get to peek inside the fan favorite's mind. 
An interesting moment to note is Levi's comment about how fast the Titans are. In a past breakdown, we theorized about how the power of his spinal fluid directly injected acts differently than when drank or breathed in. Another area we didn't think about is how far away he has to be, or the amount of Titans he can control at one time potentially spreading out his power depending on the number or distance. Something that we hope is revealed later. But Bloody Levi comes in right behind him, kills the three titans, and we get Zeke vs. Levi round three. You'd think we'd have a lot to say about this, but Levi absolutely decimated the beast titan once again, just as clearly as season three's battle. We honestly thought it might have gone a bit longer, but hey, there's no stopping Levi. This dude's just the ultimate badass. Moving on to Shiganshina District itself, we see Keith Shadis preparing the 109th Training Corps and telling them to focus on their training for Titans rather than the current situation on the island. He was soon interrupted by Flock and the Jaegerist, who prompted the young rookies to beat the crap out of their commander to prove their loyalty towards Eren and his mission. We see a motivated Keith Shadis that none of the rookies will be able to take him down, but that didn't exactly last too long as it seems Isayama is done playing around with morality. He's just out to hurt us again as the bystander we know is left bloodied and unconscious on the ground. Finally, an anime where the old man trope doesn't quite hold up. The episode ends with Zeke on the verge of death, lying in a cart with Levi watching over him. Pierced through a thunder spear that he can't move, and just for some extra safe, Levi even chops off his feet to make sure there's no funny business. Let's be honest though, it looks like Levi was doing that more for himself than anything else. With the amount of sheer pain Zeke has gone through, and his conniving ways, we have a strong feeling that this isn't the end for his plans. Until then, we want to thank you for watching this week's episode breakdown of Attack on Titan. We hope you enjoyed, and we'll be back in a few hours for Season 4, Episode 15, and this Wednesday for ReZero, Season 2, Episode 25. Until then, don't forget to toss us a like, subscribe to Detective Anime, and feel free to comment below if we missed anything. Also, check out our Attack on Titan and ReZero playlists for past episodes. Thanks for watching.